Everyone around us keeps dying, Timmy. Everyone keeps dying to keep us alive because we're supposed to do something and we can't sit around here and keep acting like we're not supposed to. You better figure out what you I don't know if it's you, say. you, or if it's going to create like another universe, but I think you are about to be shot back into the past. And if that's true, then you could fix all of this shit. They're going to run towards you. What would you like to do? I'm going to close my eyes. Hello. And welcome to Kolak, America's heart. Life is generally easy in Kolak. The spirit of our small town is built around enjoying life, despite our technological empire. Kolak is like Paris. Art, music, and treasures of life are not just incidental. They are central to the spirit of our little town. This is a special gift for visitors and those who live in our vast green valley. Kolak's natural beauty can be thanked to the peaks that tower over us in our four corners, shielding us from the elements. Spend the day at Crater Lake, fed by the ever-flowing Riley River. America's heart. Enjoy our historic Main Street, or take a tour of our world-famous Shepherd's Winery. My favorite. Golok prides itself in being a world leader in renewable energy and advanced medicine. All thanks to our most famous attraction, Synchroneity Tech. Many new families find their home in Kolak. Brought in to fill one of the country's most exciting genetic research facilities, many open roles. <laughs> Science is at the very soul of Kolak, unlike anywhere else in the world. Gated by nature itself. These teens, like many before them, are filled with thoughts that they feel justify their actions. Maybe, just maybe, we could understand their choices if we understood their frame of mind. It is, after all, and always will be, about perspective. So please, Marcus, share with us. I don't think I can do anything right. All the decisions I make, no one seems to like them. No one. No one. I've become that outcast that I always never wanted to be. I tried to learn sports. I tried to, to be cool just so I could fit in. And I feel like I'm sending out more and more every day. Even when it comes to powers, I feel like my peers are getting stronger while I have this power that I don't still completely understand. And anytime I've used it, it's harmed myself. The memories, the things that wrong, the bad, the dark things that my mom did, they're all in my brain. They constantly replay over and over again. Did I do the right thing? Should she have kept this in her mind? Or should I keep it now in mind, but have to replay it constantly? And something weird happened when I was with Timmy. I, even before I touched him, I sensed his power almost like it was on my own. I don't know what that was all about. All I do know is that we're going back to Kulak. We're going to try to fix all this. But if I don't even know how to do things right when I'm following the rules and how to do things right when I'm trying to make things normal again, I don't know what's right anymore. All I know is this Yoohoo vending machine I found is damn good. <laughs> I would like to personally think Sayaka for teaching us and our other passengers that if they include things in their journal entries it's less likely to be argued against and they can basically build their own story however they like in these moments. So thank you for that and thank you Marcus. Okay. So... I guess you can sense people's powers now and that's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> Dear journal, I am a dragon and <laughs> I can do things. Okay. Impact. I think I did something bad. But how do I know if what I did was even real at this point? 
Soon I'll have lived more of a lie than a life, and I'm not even sure if that's relieving or just kind of depressing, but maybe it's a mixture of both. I'm also starting to forget things, I think. Sometimes I remember an entire quiet life with Sky and Sayaka and Bucket and the rest of the guys, and like I go to work, I come home, I cook dinner, there is no synchronicity, there is no danger, I don't have these powers. But other times, that's all I remember. The danger and the synchronicity and the terrible powers and everything that goes along with it. But right now, I can remember both, and I'm not sure how long this moment of clarity will last. The stress of it all tears me apart, and I think forgetting is my body's way of keeping me alive, of not losing everything. I wish I could choose to forget. I wish I didn't have to live with the fact that I killed all of those soldiers. Or maybe I wish to forget the fact that I don't have an ounce of guilt over it. Should I wish that? Should I have guilt? I'm not even sure anymore, and I think that's the scariest part. Thank you. Mickey Jones, do you mind sharing with us? Not at all. That's the last straw. I've never felt this angry before. My body feels like it's on fire and my head is pounding. I can't stop all of these awful thoughts from flooding in. It's never been fair for me, not since day one. My family was taken from me. It wasn't much, but it was all I had. It's all I've ever had. I never had a real home. I never had real friends. These guys were supposed to be my friends, but I can't help but feel like they're always judging me. But they don't get it. They don't know what it's like. I've had everything taken from me, and now I have nothing left to lose. My body feels hot, and my thoughts are racing, but something in me feels cold. It feels dark. And one thing I am absolutely certain, I will kill anyone who tries to take anything from me again. Okay then. Billy Baker, do you mind sharing with us hopefully something a little less cryptic? <laughs> Diary. <laughs> We're just digging our own graves. Should I make room for you? Wait, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Billy Baker. <laughs> Sayaka, would you like to share with us? Yes. Okay, great. Dear Diary, Nick, Nick is scared of me. It's sad. <laughs> I always felt I'm invis invisible, and he's literally invisible. If someone who can understand me, it's him. But he doesn't think, he doesn't know that. He doesn't think we were the same. He doesn't know that. I would do anything for him. I would do anything for my American friends and my forever baby, J.A.F. Thanks to MPEG, when time was paused, she stole diapers and formulas. She's a soldier killer and thief and my friend. Thank you, Sayaka. Sky. It's hard to follow. <laughs> I understand. <clears throat> Dear Rachel, here's a few things I never told you. It was me who broke your Barbie in sixth grade, not Lenny. I'm sorry I lied. The six months we spent not talking were some of the darkest days of my life. Traumatic, I know, but I missed you in a way I didn't understand until now. I was jealous of Marcus, jealous of the way you looked at him, wishing, wishing it was the way you looked at me, jealous of the time you spent with him, just jealous that I, I wasn't him. I love you, Rachel. 
Or, I loved you. I'm sorry I never told you when it mattered. I was scared and I hadn't figured out what I was feeling yet. And I was terrified of telling anyone until now. I also didn't want to lose you. But now that I have, I never want to make that mistake with anyone ever again. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave today in a way I couldn't with you. Life is different now. And I don't want to live for anyone but myself. We begin again. 5 a.m. March 17th. Or is it 20th? It depends on who you ask. We pick up with our group of weary travelers and adventurers moments before dawn. A dawn that was promised to show a meeting of the worlds. But we will offer no distractions from this plot. No looks behind the curtain to help you, passengers at home, to understand the predicament this world is currently in. No glimpses into what may have led us to this point, this convergence. You've seen enough. No, tonight we begin as we should, directly where we left off, in a van, driven by a shape-shifting mass of flesh who claims to be the son of Clarity and Na, the most powerful woman in the world. This van, for some odd reason, is headed directly into the mouth of the fire, the pearly black gates of hell, Kolok, Washington. Surviving an attempt at their capture by the US government, they know safety that they were being provided by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, like their old dear friend, Agent Perry Bucket, is now dead. Nowhere is safe. We ponder over what could be pushing them forward, what propels them into clearly the most dangerous place they could dare to go. This group of, well, let's be frank, children, kids. They may be ranging in age, yes, but they are all equally ill-prepared to face the world as it is currently presented to them. They drive, unsure if the glow in the east is of the sunrise or something else still burning in the town, something else still mysterious and looming in the town in the way of the towers, holding up that mirror to the world. But it's not a mirror, is it? It's a door. Mickey Jones' wheels remain locked in the back of this van as it speeds around curves in this mountainous road. She feels her weight shift from side to side, trying not to slide, a little top-heavy than everyone else. She notices Tibby, who's trying not to be noticed. He's helping her. He knows it will upset her if she does notice, so he's trying to do this cleverly, placing his hand near the bottom of a spoke on a wheel, helping secure this chair in place. He looks forward as if he's doing nothing. Hey, Tibby? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I, I dropped something, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a washer, I dropped a, a washer. You just found that on the floor? Yeah, I did. Um, look, I, I, I noticed you helping everyone last night, everyone who was hurt? Y yeah. I was wondering if, if you wouldn't mind if we could try something. Did, did you get... I, I mean, we can't, we, we can't fix your legs. We, we already... I know. But did you get hurt? Is it something... Are you okay? Um, sort of. I just... Do you trust me? Well, I, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're friends. Yeah, I trust you. Wanna... Well, why, why would you ask if I trust you? 
I want to take Tibby's hand and just put it under my shirt so that he's touching my chest, but my skin. <sighs> what? What are you? Uh, Relax. I just. It's so warm. I just. My chest has been hurting ever since Portland. <clears throat> yeah. I, I just figured I'd try, but it 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 didn't work. You can have your hand back now. Oh. <clears throat> I just didn't. I wanted to see if it worked on all kinds of pain. Uh, oh. Uh. Y- y- you mean like literally your heart hurts? Just my my chest. Ever since everything that happened, you know. Oh. Uh. I think it's called anxiety. I heard about it once. Um. Uh, yeah, I think you might have some of that. Right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're sweaty. Yeah, I sweat when I'm nervous. Um, uh, Look, I'm sorry. I just I want I I needed to see if it would do anything. Uh, well, Maybe it, numb something. It I uh, I felt some. This isn't you, about me. Um, you felt something? N- no. You uh, weren't like feeling around. No, no, no. N- n- uh, I'm okay. We're okay. You're cool. We're cool. You, th- your heart was hurting. You thought I could fix it. Um, I can't. I, I, I don't think I can fix emotions. It was worth a shot, right? I, I can only hurt or fix like physical problems. Um, I'm sorry you're hurting so bad. Uh. I, I'm really sorry. I am. Uh, I know it's not fair. All of it. Everything that's happening to you. Um, you know, your, your friend, and then your legs, and How now can your you... family. I, it's not fair. How do you keep trying to make the right choice when it doesn't seem like what's right even matters anymore? Because that's what Spider-Man would do. But Spider-Man's not real. This is real. Well, I mean, Stan Lee's real, and Steve Ditko's real, and, uh, you know... I don't know who those people are. Oh, um... (laughs) they, they, They make up the stories, and they try to make us better people by telling us what we should do in these kinds of situations. Um, You know, I think you can learn a lot from fiction because it's a world we all want to live in, an imaginary world where when under the pressure we all, we might make mistakes, but we make the right choice. We do the right thing. This is the real world and we're not heroes and it doesn't seem like the good guy is even winning right now. It's not going to end like in the comic books. You don't know that. but we have to try. Do we? Why? It just doesn't seem like there's a point anymore. Nothing we do has mattered. Nothing making a right choice or a wrong choice has mattered. Everything's blown up in our faces anyway. And no one else is playing by those rules. Why should we? Okay, let me tell you a quick story about a friend of mine. Him and his family or friends, they were a family, um, were really smart and some of the brightest people on, on Earth. And they went out to space to try to advance the human race and make everything better. But then a cosmic wave hit their ship and it changed him. And it made him a monster. And he thought he'd lost everything. Everyone hated him. He, he, people screamed when they saw him. The, the love of his life didn't even want to look at him anymore. His whole life had changed for the worse. And they had these abilities like us. And, and the world started changing around them. And one of their best friends, uh, well, kind of, he was a dickbag. He, regardless, he, he, he got hit by the wave too and started doing really bad things and hurting people. And then when everything looked like it could be lost and everything got so bad and literally the whole planet was going to be killed by this world-eating monster called Galactus, um, they didn't give up. And despite 
the rest of the world not accepting them anymore. They still did the right thing and did what they could to make the world a better place and save everyone else because everyone else just doesn't know. They're just ignorant and they don't they don't get it. But we can keep trying to do the right thing and save the planet from the uh, big purple dude. Big purple dude. Galactus. Right. You know, Tibby, you might just be the best of all of us, but I think you're giving some of us too much credit. Everyone's already always expected the worst from me. Why shouldn't I just give it to them? Nobody expects the worst from you. You're like one of the coolest people I know. You're the only person who thinks that. No, I'm not. My whole life, no one has thought that. Well, because us 14-year-olds don't talk about it in front of you. We all think you're super rad. So what all the 14-year-olds think? Yeah, especially us boys. We talk about it at the comic book shop and stuff. You were like the super smart hot girl that worked at the theater and was super into books and stuff. And we were all like, oh, I wish a girl in our grade was like that. And I was trying to tell them, like, I bet there is. We just don't see them. And they were like, oh, whatever. You're stupid, Tibby. Tibby, I need you to do me a favor. And if I decide that I don't want to play by your rules anymore, I need you to stay out of my way. Um, I can't do that. Even if you want me to. Because I think you'd hate me for it later. Then you might end up getting hurt. I can take it. I can just fix myself. Well, we already know it doesn't work on emotions. So. Well, yeah, I know. I, I would have fixed a lot of things by now if that was, if I could do that. Yeah. You shouldn't change, Tibby. I'm gonna try not to. Driving the van is Clarence and Ah. We're still about 20 minutes out from the town. Can anybody tell me why we're doing this? <laughs> because our hometown is on fire. Yeah, but you're the most wanted people in the history of the world right now. We can't just go driving in there. What are you suggesting? We do some kind of covert mission? We disguise ourselves? I left my disguise back at the base. I can disguise us. What do you mean? I'll make us look like emergency services. Do it. Wait, 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 wait. Do wait, I have any um, tokens? What? Billy Baker has I know seven I have tokens available. I'm gonna use them to make us look like emergency services. I want it to be like, um, uh, I want it to look like our own unit, not like generic emergency services, but like maybe we're wearing like yellow, um, like yellow doctor scrubs, so that um, also we appear different, like our faces, uh, so that if there were other emergency services there, they wouldn't think we were working together. But do we look the same to each other? Yes. Okay. Make us look the same to each other. Billy Baker, that will take four tokens. Would you like to walk me through this transformation? Yeah. Uh, I look the coolest, obviously. Oh. Uh, I look maybe eight, nine inches taller. Uh, Tibby also looks really cool. He's like super buff. Got a couple tattoos. Um, and uh, everyone else looks pretty much the same, but different faces. <laughs> uh, and they're, everyone's wearing like yellow, like emergency looking. Billy Baker, as you reach out into the multiverse to change this reality into a reality you want it to be, a reality that the rest of the world will perceive, something feels off. This Clarence Anna, you can't change him or the perception of him. And as you reach out, looking for some way to do so, you realize it's because you see no other version of him. He is the only one. There is no other. Uh, okay. So I'm guessing you did that, and I am now in a van with a bunch of... Okay, was the, the little squirmy kids the jacked up one with tattoos now, right? Yeah, that's Tibby. What? Wow. I have tattoos? Oh, my mom's gonna kill me. Oh. Dude, I'll, I'll change you back. What? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's not... Dude. Oh, I forgot about the baby. 
uh, a baby. We just can we just rescued baby, the baby. Right? Yeah, it's not a okay. big deal. No one's gonna question a rescue service. But all right, uh, I could make the baby like a scary thing, so no one comes near. It. No. Like a How about you just leave oh, it as a child? I can put um, J uh, J A in my tuck it into my shirt and look like I'm pregnant. You might suffocate him in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> what if you fall? There's nothing unusual about rescue services <laughs> caring for a child. I'll tell you what is kind of unusual is that y you are the only Clarence. Well. What? I know a Clarence. He's not the only one. I can't, I can't change him, though. What do you mean? I pull people from other universes, and there's nothing to... Nothing to change with you. That's he can to be change expected. himself, though. I can change myself. What? Watch. Hold the wheel, Marcus. Okay. Ooh, party tricks. As Marcus Bennett reaches over and grabs the wheel on a quick little straight stretch, the body of Clarence Naw falls into a puddle in the seat. What? And then quickly reforms. Now as a person you've never seen before wearing the exact same clothing as you. But the voice matches. But the rest has changed. Well, that's kind of gross. Whoa, okay, big philosophical question. Do you even know what you look like, or do you just pick a body? I just kind of go for what I think's cool. I don't... Tibby, is philosophical a word? Uh, yeah, totally, definitely. Am I saying it right? Uh-huh, I think so. Cool. I know there's none other like me. We're... Some of us are constants. We're the only ones. The entire Anna line. My mother made sure of that. That appearance that you normally have, did you choose that one, or is that your, how you really look? I chose it. Your mother killed all the other Anas in all the different like, universes? As far as we know, yeah. How long did that take? I don't know. Happened before I was created. We've heard about an, an Ana, Shiloh Ana. It's my oh, yeah. grandfather. That was in, uh, wasn't that, wasn't that in that place I went? Yeah. The grotto? Yes. <laughs> when I was stuck in that room, there was like a painting or something, right? Yeah. You Why said, was he there? You said something about the painting. Why would he be, why well, would I he mean, be there? Well, I mean, he kind of built all this. What do you mean? He built all this. Synchronity, the town. He saved the town from many disasters, built it up from the ground up, made the deal with Mammon. 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 He's the one that put all this in motion before my mother took over. Well, why? Like, I guess I just don't understand why he would do all that. He thought it was the right thing to do. Why does anyone do anything? I don't know. I'm sure to him it was the only way to keep the town alive. After the disaster. Wait, you don't... Wait, what disaster? A little vague. You don't know any of this? No. no. Not really taught in history class. Do I know any of this? Was there ever a mention of something like this? Not necessarily, Billy Baker. Not to this group, anyway. Right. Uh, so what was the disaster? Crater Lake. Was it disaster? When that thing fell from the sky, it wiped out almost the entire population of this small mining town. An asteroid? Meteor. Meteor ice? Well, it was a ship. A crater? It's the thing that's a under ship? the lake. Wait, no, no, a ship? You said it was a ship? Yeah. A who, ship. Who who was the whose ship was it? We don't know. They're more it? if it's on a lake, it's a boat. And if someone knows, it's they make sure not to tell me. Is it still there? Yeah, wait, actually I have a question. Yeah. Are you what's up with you and your mom? What do you mean? Are you guys like I feel like you're helping the people that she doesn't want. I feel like we're the bad guys in this situation. Are you on your friends. mom's side? We had this conversation. I know, but you've said a whole bunch of other Not stuff. Not you. Oh. We talked about it. 
we talked about, you kids convinced me I need to do more, that I need to help put a stop to everything she's doing, that it's not right. He's definitely on our side. Whatever that thing is in the lake, it's about to come out and too. Marcus, I'm sorry I killed that guy in front of you. I don't, I was just trying to help. Your friends were worried about you. I, I tracked you to that location. I wanted to help. I may have overreacted. It's fine. I mean, the sad part about it is if you didn't do that, I might not be here right now because he was definitely coming to kill me. I'm not proud of the things I've done. I don't think many of us are. But sometimes things just have to get done. My grandfather, after that ship crashed, many years went by before anyone knew how they were going to recover. Rebuild the town, rebuild the town's economy. My grandfather was the preacher back then. Or preacher in training, I guess. My mother. Well, the strange part is she walked off that ship. Ten of her. Ten of your mom. What? Yeah. You have ten moms. No. Ten versions of her. How'd they find each other? Were they clones? Sky Hawkins, roll your brains. Difficulty of four. Oh. Some of this sounds a little familiar. You're starting to be able to piece together an image in your mind from the ramblings of the Clarity you found in the tower. Clarity, the same name as his mother. She kept saying she was strange, different, a clone. Wait. Clarity in, in the tower, she she was a clone. Maybe all these people that came off the ship. You took you... one? What? Took what? One of the Clarities. Who told you that? You just said. Oh, shit. Sky. Come on. No, you just. This is a lot more serious than I realized. But She's dead My now. mother will. And we have a baby. That's clarity. Half clarity. Half human. But you had ten what? mother, right? Is this your mom? No. We took clarity to a farm because she asked us to. And when we got there, she went inside and we didn't. And they shot her. And when we went inside, they gave us a baby and said that it was hers. And now we have a baby. His name is J.A. I have a brother. <gasps> Do you also not age? A little. Wait, I, well, how? So he's, he's not growing, but you did. We share similar DNA, but not brothers by birth I should say my my mother's clarity prime apparently one of the clones had an offspring with one of their keepers oh keepers the ones my mother assigned to watch after them she was a slut um, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> she was with them for a very long time okay what? probably had a life why doesn't he age yeah I'm sure it has something to do with Are they clones, trying to DNA? They're trying to make people they're trying to sell that. They're trying to make people not be able to age. Okay. I have more questions about this ship and where it came from. Why does she have clones of herself? The prime. We don't know. There are things we've been able I say we. My family has capitalized on over the years. Advanced, grown without fully understanding why and how. We still to this day don't understand why that ship landed here and why there were 10 of my mother on it. But they were all 17, her age at the time. My grandfather convinced the town it was a gift from God. Hard sell considering half the town was dead, trapped in the mines beneath. But how else could you explain it? What's going to happen when the lake runs out? When it's empty? What do you mean? Well, the river's running backwards. The water's going down. It's gonna Whatever's be... still down there will be seen again. We flooded that lake back in the 40s. 
Oh, it's about to be unflooded. Years went on, okay? We didn't fully know what was going on. We kept the clarity safe, kept them out of view from any travelers coming through town. But my grandfather was obsessed. The town was dying. Many people lost their loved ones. He started going to the ship. And somehow, the ship talked back, responded to him. He learned things. The Clarities were really upset. They forbid it. They freaked out about it. But he did something. He opened something. Made some sort of deal. Then all those people that were lost in the original fall walked out from those mines and went back to their families. And so the debt that Kolok rests in was created. Wow. The fingers. But it was like another version of them, right? It wasn't the prime version. We had no reason to believe it wasn't them. Wait. At the time, everyone thought it was them. Did they? They did too. Apparently, Wait, so then Grandpa were... taught them things as they came out told them of their lives that they had forgotten, sent them on to their families, and, uh... Oh. Oh, I thought he brought people back. He taught them. So they just weren't really aware of what they were before then. No. They didn't know, but he did. My mom did, and the Clarities knew, and the council. They were all entrusted to keep this a secret. But then it got turned into a business. Not yet. Took a while for that. It took a while before we realized exactly how powerful it all was, too. But... There was an earthquake. The town was rebuilt. There's a lot I don't know. I've only been able to pick up bits and pieces from my mother over the years. But I know she works in tandem with Mammon. Whatever this thing is, whatever created me, it doesn't care for us. It doesn't care for anybody. So I'm curious. You said that Clarities were cloned. Yeah. Which is why, and then you being the offspring of such things, you're not... Offspring's a stretch. I, I share my mother's DNA. Okay. So a but clone. But I was created. Yeah, like a clone. So that means you're, that's why you're not in any other world. So I think, is it, is, it, is, it, is it safe to say that if you create a new life in a universe, it doesn't mean that that life exists elsewhere? In the event that, say, anyone else was cloned? I think it depends on the person. The Anal line is a constant that exists in this universe only. Nowhere else. Someone that already existed in another universe could be cloned here, a body made. I know that's an option that Mammon offers. There's only a few of us constants. Do you lose anything? Do you, like with all these clones, are they really truly the same? Or is there something kind of lost or different about each one? Is there any way that we can differentiate? Okay. I don't know how many Clarity clones are left alive. It's been a while since I've seen them. I know that she had some of them sent to her other offices around the world. Japan, London, China. For their own safekeeping. Or so she told them. We all knew it was a bargaining chip. Her greatest asset. She uses them, my mother. To bargain for what? Her extended life and the extended life of our other executives. They don't age. Whatever created them, whatever made them, and the image of my mother, she's no longer that image, but she uses them, their blood, their bodies, to keep herself alive. Gross. And cuts off little parts of them. What? To make. You. Me. 
and others. Um, How J-A- many others? I don't know. I don't know how many others, but J.A. there Um, appears to be born. He's telling me that his mother was third clarity. It can speak to you? I can understand him. I talk to a squirrel, so I'll accept her talking to a baby. Okay, fair enough. I personally haven't heard the baby talk, but I just met her yesterday. We don't question the things that Sayaka says. What else does the baby tell you? He wants to be held by you. Held by you. I'm currently driving. I'm not holding a baby. Oh, I thought I was still driving. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) You're on a straight stretch. I I took the wheel back. Oh, okay. (laughs) He misses his brother, he says. His brother? And you think that's me? I've never met this. I don't know if that baby's actually talking to her. Are you okay? I never be. I'm. I'm never okay. Okay, fair enough. We won't. Thank you for sharing that information. What was your name? Sayaka. Thank you. Hey, big tip. If she tries to convince you you're a ghost, just. Uh... Oh, I'm not a ghost. I'm a. I'm a, I'm a... You'd be surprised. <laughs> pretty convincing. You shapeshift, though. Where did that power come from? I'm not really a body in the traditional sense. I'm, uh... I have an essence. Something that makes me me. But everything else around that is malleable. Flowing. Flesh. I can kind of be whatever I need to be, whatever I want to be, but uh, I'm still me, I'm still a person, I still have what makes me me. (laughs) What, what the hell is that? As you pull up onto the town, getting ever closer to Kolok, you can see now the glow of the town and the sunrise just over the mountains getting ever closer, creating this eerie kind of fog. But a glow from the fire still pierces through. And you hear a sound coming out over through the windows of the open van and the sounds of jets flying overhead. Loud, low rumble. He pulls the van to a stop. You can see two jets flying from a little bit in the north, making their way south. You see them fire two missiles. You see the trail of these missiles. As you see them disappear into the fog and the jets move on, only to then watch these missiles come right back up out of that fog directly into the two military jets. As one explodes flying sideways into the side of a mountain, another almost disintegrates in the air air as pieces of it come flying down into the town of Kolok. You can hear the sound of these air raid sirens continuing on. Now you notice the sounds of the helicopters, the continued gunfire small explosions and that's when you start to see the people walking out through the fog carrying their things their possessions walking up the road towards the van as they get closer they don't stop they just keep walking leaving on all sides of the van people you recognize from the town the people that didn't die in the initial blast. It appears that a lot of them are evacuating. What do you, what do, what do we, what do we, uh, do we just, mo- we going in? It's a war zone. She said that, Tibby from the back, 
She said that was going to happen. Uh, th they were going to... If they came for us... They're not going to let this meeting at dawn or whatever it is happen. It doesn't seem like it's working, though. How do you take down a jet? Magneto. Oh, shit! I mean, not actually him, but oh, okay, he can do okay. that. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, gosh, I got really scared. Well, Someone might be able to have, like, Magneto's power. I hate these sirens. They're really freaking me out. What do we do? Ooh. I want to... I want to talk to the voice in my head. The three-eyed guy. You just want to talk to the voice in your head. Mm -hmm. That will take three tokens, Billy Baker. Do you I have... have three tokens available. Cool. I'll use them. Billy Baker dives deep into his mind. He knows there's a voice there. A voice that he wants to call to. That spoke to him once. It's there no longer. But he searches... Yes. Oh. You're still there. Billy. My, my... I've been having dreams. Why have you come to me, Billy? Because I don't think my dreams are dreams. They said I could do more. You can, Billy. What can I do? You're the great diviner. Right, right, but what, what's that mean? You alter reality, but you can also see reality for what it is. You know this, Billy. Are you saying this is not our reality? I'm saying you can see through the bullshit, Billy. How? How do you do how you do? Just you think just real hard. Do it, Billy. You don't need me. I'm an excuse, Billy. I just make you feel comfortable doing what you do. You think that by talking to me, it takes something off of your shoulders. I'm not real, Billy. What? I'm just you. Why do you sound like that? Whatever makes you sleep at night, Billy Baker. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to look into that. Coming out of that, I want to try to see what I can. So, Billy Baker, you would like to... Perceive reality correctly. Okay. So as this van is pulled off to the side and people walk on both sides of this van, like a stream of minnows moving around a rock, and you see the trails of gunfire moving out into the distance towards that mirror, those towers, through the fog. Everything you see through there, Billy Baker, it looks normal. And for a minute you think, Maybe it's not working. You think maybe you did it wrong. As in that moment, you retreat back into the van, your vision, your sight. Before you dip your head in defeat, you glimpse Sky Hawkins. Something's not right. She is not right. Her body like a rip and a tape, like a signal on a television that's not tuned right. It's hard for you to visualize, to understand what you're seeing, but you can think it, you can feel it. Her body, like a rubber band that's being stretched, getting closer and closer to its end before it snaps back. You can see through her. Billy Baker as if she's not even there. But you know she's in front of you. She exists in this space. But something in your mind tells you that she actually does not. Um, asking you, uh, 
can I ask you if I'm perceiving this correctly? I would need to know how you're perceiving it. I feel like Sky is in the wrong time, and she will reset at the end of the rubber band. She'll be slung back to the beginning. I will tell you that you are perceiving that correctly, Billy Baker. Hey, uh, hey, Sky. Yeah. You're like, you're like, out of time, right? Yeah. Like, you get what that means? No. But the owl said so. I guess it must be true. Sky, I, I think you don't belong here. Time-wise. What do you mean? Please Billy? don't hit me. Oh my God. Uh, I think that you are. You're, you're in the wrong time, and the rest of us are in the right time, and you're gonna be shot back to, to wherever the rubber band starts. What? I don't... I don't know. What? What do you mean, kid? What, what, what's he talking about, Sky? I, I can see bullshit through bullshit. What did you... And it looks like bullshit, but... She looks like bullshit. She's, like, Billy. stretched across... I can see the, the beginning of her, and she's going to snap back to the beginning of it. I want to punch Billy in the arm. Roll your fight difficulty of four for me. I want to catch her fist. <laughs> it's a four. <laughs> Throw it. She did only roll a four, so I will let you roll a fight difficulty of four. Cool. Four. Son of a... And it explodes. Oh. Eight. Billy Banker, without flinching... I'm still seeing through the well, bullshit as right I'm, now. As 11. I'm like going to punch him, I'm like, Sky's not bullshit. As you go to punch him, Billy Baker, without even flinching or looking at you, grabs your fist. Somehow, <laughs> this power that allows him to see through things allows him to perceive things, I guess, at a heightened rate. Thank cool. you, Peg. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bullshit, Billy. You're gonna... You're gonna... You better figure out what you I don't know if it's you, say. you, or if it's gonna create, like, another universe, but I think you are about to be shot back into the past. And if that's true, then you could fix all of this shit. Do you want me to right? punch him? No, no, it's okay. What, does any of this make sense to you? A little, but I don't understand. The only time I was away from you guys was when I was in Mammon, right? Mm-hmm. And How when I came back, I thought it was what day did I think it was? Roll your brains, difficulty of four. It's a five. Your journal entry stated March 15th. That's it. That's a day before. Mm. March what day was it? 18th was the day you pulled her out. Uh, the day. What was the day that Lexi. Was that that the was on March 18th. March 18th was the day yeah. that Tibby healed her. Right. And I came back Got it. March 15th. Didn't I? That's what your journal says. That's what I think. I think somehow I time traveled. We have multiverse traveling. Now we have time traveling. No, I think it makes sense, kind of, because I read something like if you're, like, traveling fast enough away from far enough point, and then you could teleport back, it's all, like, relativity bullshit. I don't think Billy knows anything that he's talking about. Dude, he's just making stuff up now. It actually kind of makes sense. Oh, uh, what? wasn't Mammon on a meteor? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's flying through space. You but were who knows a, Hold where? up. You were in the grotto. Yeah. Time doesn't work the same there as it works here. Because you're traveling through space. Someone pulled you out of the grotto, uninterrupted. You didn't exit of your own will. Yeah. I, 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 I did that. Um, I, I made her. I pulled her out forcefully by. Well, we, we well, acted too. I, I pulled her. You healed her. Yeah. I sat in the corner. But, Billy, can't you just make it seem like it's the time she's supposed to be from? I don't. No. I think this It might would only seem that way. It wouldn't actually fix anything. If what you're saying is true, then I can go back and I can fix all of this. I don't think it's about you going back. I think it's about you will. You came out on the 15th and you were mine in that journal. 
We need someone, we need someone to help us with this. Uh, oh, my mom. I think my mom can help us. She did some pretty fucked up shit at Synchronity. How can she, she help? She's a scientist. She knows way more than we do. And okay, I'm just a bag of flesh, so that's a good start. Um, okay. And if any information is missing, my mom worked with her mom, and I kind of know a lot of what my mom did as well. They're, they're at the house. They wouldn't leave without me. At least I don't think. We should go. There's only one way to find out. If you can actually stop this from happening, if you can fix this, that's the most important thing right now. I, I can. Okay. But what do we do? Do we keep her alive before she I mean, gets sent back? Let's say she fixes it. This timeline continues. Are we stuck here? Are we all gonna die, like they said? How do, do you know it continues? I don't. Do you? I'm a bag of flesh, remember? We yeah. need to talk to somebody smarter than me. Let's go talk to my mom. Let's do it. Okay. Strap in. Clarence begins to drive. At first, very slow, having to push through the people. His fist down on the horn, urging people to get out of the way. Muscular tattooed Tibby hanging out the window. <laughs> Move! Move! <laughs> As the crowd starts to part to one side, you're able to push through a little faster. You eventually find yourself on the edge of the town at a military blockade. Okay. I hope you're as good as they say, kid. What do, what do you need me to do? We gotta get in. Do you have any ideas? My ideas are really bad. All right, we're already in emergency service, but we don't have any sort of official identification. You left that part out. If only we had our ties. <sighs> Wait, who's, who's, in, who's in front? Marcus Bennett sits in the passenger seat. Who's who, okay, who do we have to get past to get in? A military blockade. What if... How many people? Roll your brains for me. <laughs> All right. Difficulty of six. Okay. Eight. From your vantage point, you can see six people standing in a block. There are two yellow and black wooden slats that are put up on the road. You see six from this side, three on one, three on the other. You do notice a tower, but in the fog, you can't really see if anyone is sitting on top of that tower. It's safe to assume there probably is. All right. What is it? Let me out of the car. What, what, we, why? Just let me out. I, I mean, we are no one's stopping you, man. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get out of the car. Oh, my God. What are you doing? What is he doing? Hands in the air. Who are you? I'm, I'm just a service worker. Why are, you, why are you stepping out of your car? Pull forward. Show us some identification. So I want to, can I walk up? Hands in the air. What are you doing? I'm just, we're just, we just need to have a conversation. I can show you my ID. Let's let me come closer. Bring me your identification okay. now. All right. So then I'm going to reach in my pocket to act like I'm getting my identification. Okay. It's right here, sir. And then I'm going to grab his arm when I pull my hand back out. Roll your brains. Difficulty of 10 before I even allow this to happen. You are in the view of five other people who are military I, I, issued. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one. <laughs> Bye, Marcus. Wait, Marcus, wait. you have a can choice I, to can make. Can I help him? Can I help him? Technically, Sayaka, you can. Yes. Because you have 16 tokens available. Now, I told you a difficulty of 10. Yeah. You could help him with nine tokens. He would still have tokens left over. Granted, you have seven, but I'm guessing you want to hold on to some oh. to use your ability. Oh, I, I, yeah. Yes. So, Sayaka, 
How many tokens would you like to help him with? Uh, how many need? He needs nine. Nine. Okay, nine. Nine. This is a huge help. I need you to describe to me in story how you jump out of the van and help distract from what he's doing mm -hmm. in this moment, so he can do this without being seen by the other officers. Oh, so wait, wait. So, so save how he save him is this. Officer won't see Just him. Just tell me how you distract all the other people. I was gonna say, hey, he's my, he's the only black guy in our team. We need <laughs> him. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and and I didn't want to, and I would distract him. I mean, I'm that's a pretty good distraction. <laughs> <laughs> What team? What team are you talking about? I'm not racist. I'm not. What are you? What are you insinuating? I'm not racist. We're emergency services, sir. Yes. We have a baby. Would it help if we had an emergency? Maybe lead with the baby next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are currently able to touch this individual without being seen by the others, as you hear Sayaka mention that you're the only black man on the team. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it, did you make me black when you changed? Yeah, yeah, okay, for sure. Okay, for I'm sure. making sure. I'm making sure. Uh, um, okay, great. So then, I would like to go in the memory of this person that okay. I touched. Okay. So your hand gets placed onto his, mm -hmm. and in that moment, you find yourself drifting through these memories of this stranger, unsure of what it is you should even be looking for. So tell me. Marcus Bennett, what would you like to be looking for? How many tokens do I have? You have now 10 tokens. Okay, so uh, I would like to find in his memory other times that he has checked for other IDs, but I want to shift that memory into present time so that when he comes out of it, he's going to already assume that we have shown him those IDs and his immediate thought is to let us through. I'm gonna make you use five tokens to do that because you're trying to force a memory that he saw an ID from a completely different group of people. Right. And right. looks up after this moment and sees a completely different person. But he's remembering the action of approval. I'm gonna say five tokens. Okay, I'll take it. You're so proud of that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, already, I, I already checked your ID, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and it was a black ID, by the way. I just... <laughs> I, I don't... <laughs> hey, we're, we're not... Uh... Yeah, that's what I thought. All right, we can come through. We can come through. Uh, yeah, let him through. Let him through. <laughs> wow. The van pulls up with the door open on the side. Sayaka, get in. Oh, okay. Get in. Okay, 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 okay. Marcus, come on. All right. Like seriously? <laughs> yeah. We need you. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think that's what he means by seriously. Oh, you it's... made a person think they were a ghost. You have a baby in the first thing you come on. Well, it worked. So I'm the thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the distraction. So I can Marcus whatever you did. Good thinking, but be on the lookout. Right. There's right. patrols everywhere down here. You can hear the sounds of explosions in the distance. Whatever it was that was happening, it's still happening. You can't see too well through the fog, but the sun is starting to crest. Dawn is close by. Can we see the, the tower? You can't see it just yet. Not through the fog since you're on the north side of town. But you make your way slowly through those neighborhoods towards the house of Sky Hawkins. The van pulls to a slow stop. Uh, hey guys, it's it's me, Nick. I took a nap. Anything happen? Where are we? No. <laughs> oh, Nick, hey. Hey, Nick. Oh, peop I know, people forget I'm here because I'm invisible. And I'm really sorry, dude. I know. Yeah. That's, that's cool, though, that you can now just be eavesdropping on people and be like That's I was taking me. a nap I mean I was taking I was totally taking a nap yeah but I was we taking have no a nap. proof of that and that's I was cool taking that's good why do you. I hear sirens what's going on oh we're back in Kolok what 
Yeah, we're trying. I thought you were joking. No, we're serious, man. Nick, <sighs> you're actually super important in this scenario. Uh, you're also the in. safest of all of us. We're going to need your help, mm -hmm. man. Need as many people as we can get. Okay. I'm here to help, but under one condition and one condition only. What? Keep Sayaka the fuck away from me. Well, hey. hey, chill. You're going to have to tell us Sayaka. where you are. I'm in, you can't hear, I'm in the back of the van. I know, but like sometimes she might be close to you and we won't know. Oh, okay. If I'm, if I say out loud, get the fuck away from me, that means I'm close to Sayaka. Okay. Why don't okay. you just okay. not stand near her? You should you wear a mask. You can see her. But then I wouldn't be invisible. Just don't stand next to her. That's true. What's yeah. wrong with Sayaka? I feel like I'm being judged a lot right now. I jumped off a building. I'm still hurting very badly. Okay. And I, I'm just a little freaked out about it. And there's a siren. It's making me really anxious. She's been through a lot. She's been... You're letting her hold a child. And she's doing a good job at it so yeah. far. I've, I've only seen good things out of Sayaka. She talks to it a lot. Um, and she holds it. She tries to pass it off to other people. And I can take care of you too. No. It's just... Stay away from me. Okay? You freak me out. You yep. have, like, some sort of power over me. It's super weird. Did you ever think that maybe you're just a little stupid? Who just yep. willingly jumps off of a roof? Or you have a crush Have you ever her. woke up invisible? She's woken up dead. Oh. <laughs> I've woken up dead, bitch. <laughs> okay, well... I bet you were, could have been convinced you were a ghost when you woke up dead. She was actually a ghost for a short time. More okay, well then my, I proved my point. <laughs> Nick, I just want to tell you, I know how you feel. Oh. Okay. Because I was always invisible. Okay, we're doing this right now? <laughs> I can tell, I feel, I know how you feel, Nick. Please don't push me away. You told me to jump <laughs> off a building. Technically, she told you you could fly. I'm, I'm not on her side, yes. honestly, Nick. I thought I believed that you can fly. You also, I was not dead. I could hear you call me a disappointment. Because I thought you were dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just keep yeah. her away from me, okay? Can I, can I, can I? Uh... We'll work on this later. We, we have other things. <laughs> okay, okay. Can I can I walk over and have an aside with Sky while this whole thing is going on? <laughs> the van is opening. People are starting to get out of the van. Oh, uh, okay. That's why that's it. You can do that. Yeah. All right. Hey, are you uh, you nervous to talk to your mom? Uh, yeah. I mean, she wasn't in the best mental state last we left her. Uh, I, I think she's doing better. She's had time to rest and kind of get over some things. She's come to terms that I'm back now and I'm alive. But, I mean, I hate her. I hate her so much. Well, I figured you were going through something. Didn't touch you or anything. Didn't look at memories. Yeah, if you just... touch me, I, I might slit your throat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, Marcus? I know you would. Um, no, um, I'll do it. No, it's just, I just figured you were, seemed nervous. You were, like, a little fidgety. Obviously, we're at the house, and... Okay, it's going to sound kind of weird, but I... I can't help but notice that you were kind of like staring M back down. What? Like the whole ride, like during the ride, like you, like, especially when there was a whole, like, you might go back. There just was something in your eyes. You like, you darted directly at her. I just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I. Is it because of that whole story that came out that I, I know I blurted that out, but, but it just. Yeah, it was kind of rude. I didn't mean to. It just kind of all came out because I was touching Sayaka's hand. Are we just going to stand out here and possibly get hit by a stray piece of shrapnel, or are we going to go inside and figure out what the hell's going on? We're going inside. It's just she hasn't seen her mom in a while, and it seemed like I was trying to help out with emotions. Go on. Go, do you, go do inside. Do you need help with emotions? You know what? Just, just go. Just walk ahead. Can you not? Do, do your legs not work? You can't, like, knock on the door? Can you figure stuff out on your own? Do you want me to hold your hand? Clarence she, goes she and knocks on the door. <laughs> Mr. and Miss Hawkins, I am a living pile of flesh. Your daughter is going to be sent back in time. We need answers. Great tact. That was a good one. It's not the weirdest thing they've ever heard. 
Ruffling and shuffling can be heard from inside the house as some lights kick on. You hear running coming up to the door. Your dad opens it. Sky? Sky! Hello? Sky! Hey, Dad! Oh, come on, come on! We gotta, we gotta get to the cellar, come on! Dad, how do you know it's me? Do I look like a weirdo? What? <laughs> Wait, does it not work with my parents? To him, she looks completely normal. I guess I... Anyone we know, maybe? I, I don't know wow. how I did it. Wow. Man, I had a whole speech. Uh, okay, sure. Come on, guys. Let's go to the Wait, base. wait, wait. Who are... These are my friends, Dad. Oh, my God. There's actually a lot. We need your help right now. Uh, Mr. Hawkins. Emergency services. Do I look like a kid to you? You're Billy Baker. Okay. I'm Billy. Dad, we're using our powers right now. We don't look like ourselves. We look like someone else. So if anyone comes by and asks who we are... Just tell them that we're helping you, okay? Okay, get inside. Okay. Where, where's mom? Is she Everyone's basement? looking for you. They've already been by here twice. I know they don't know it's us. We're get disguised. Inside. I said we were. <laughs> I thought I'm we were, going, already, we were walking inside. inside. <laughs> he shuts the door and looks through the blinds. As he's going to shut it, he feels it push up against someone. Ow! God! Oh. Damn it! Sorry, we have an invisible friend. Fuck! <laughs> Nick, you gotta hustle. I'm sorry. Hi, Mr. Hawkins. Well, they have a broken oh. leg. We gotta figure this out. Um, <sighs> can I, um... Are there, like, any, um... Like, uh, gloves or anything nearby? <laughs> sure. Okay. I On... Wanna... There's a little, uh, table next to the door with keys, a catch-all, and a couple pairs of gloves. Alright, so, Nick... Here, put these on so we can at least see where you are for right now. But then take them off when we also, need to be Also, Nick, your junk better not touch anything in this house. You probably shouldn't sit anywhere. You want me to just stand? Figure it out, man. I mean, we're not going to know if he sits or not. Fine, so. I'll stand I'll at the door. I'll, I'll watch at the door. I'm invisible so no one can see me up here. I'm gonna there black you light go. Test because all it's, of this. it's rude to sit on the couch on a naked butt. Thank you. Stay away from me. <laughs> Yes, keep look out. That's a, good, that's a good use of your ability there, Nick. Dad, where's mom? She's in the cellar. We gotta go. They're, 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 they're trying to blow up that, that thing. Okay, let's go. Let's go. All right. We start to move down to the cellar that he has in the back by the laundry room. It's dark. There's nothing down there but a lone TV and rows of canned goods. You can see your mother sitting in the back, lit by the flicker of the television. She has a blanket over her. Who's at the door? Um, it's, it's Skye. She turns. Uh, I'm glad you're okay. Yeah, we're all okay. But we need your help, Mom. My help? Yeah. Turns out... Uh, all that crazy stuff you did could actually come in handy. Um. Hold on, hold on. She puts up her hand and leans into the TV, turning it up. You can see on the television live footage as the sun breaks from down inside the town, just about a mile and a half from where you are now. You can see from this live video feed, the stonemasons have once again joined hands. They've created some sort of force field, a large bubble over the two towers with the mirror in between. Inside, through, you can see six individuals with their hands pressed up against the mirror, the camera zooming in and out trying to capture the full scene. And then out of nowhere, the camera pans to reveal a woman with white hair walking from within a tree. You can see on the outside of this circle, military forces trying to break through this force field. Explosions, smoke. Nothing seems to be working, but this woman with white hair just appears and begins to walk towards the mirror. And then some sort of sound. And this is a strange sensation for you, 
Because what you see on the TV is delayed. In person, you feel the ground rumble, and then a delay. Seconds later, you see the camera shake. It pans, revealing the almost empty lake. Within this almost empty lake, you see that there's an orange orb, almost like a marble, pulsing, glowing. And with each pulse, it looks more like a womb, the shape of something within it, a figure, humanoid-like, pulsing. You can see metal flowing from the sides down into this orb as if it's being sucked up into it. The debris from one of the crashed jets, whatever metal was in the bottom of this lake, all flowing into this orb as it pulses. The camera quickly turns back to inside the force field at the tower, the mirror. The individuals whose hands were placed there have now turned. The six individuals are facing Clarity Prime. They all nod. She turns, ushering them away. They begin to walk, the camera panning with them to this dead, nearly destroyed tree from the blast. And then they walk into it and descend to some place unknown. You feel another shake at the house. The whole foundation moves with the rumble. A delay. Seconds later, the camera sees a large flash of light you hear one of the voices over the newscast. What the, do you see that? As the camera pans as quickly as it can to reveal that orange globe in the bottom of the lake. It's broken, like an egg that's been hatched, empty. And in that moment, as the newscast dies, your mother leans forward, turns every station, She adjusts the antenna, nothing. You continue to hear the sounds of explosions, the ground rumbling. She turns the TV off and sits back. Uh. That tree they went into, that's how you get to Mammon. A door will open up. Uh, They must have seen it and went through. What was the big orange thing? That's the ship? I don't, I don't know what that was. I... My mother always said that there were parts of that ship left down there. She tried to get rid of them. I don't know. I, I don't know. It but looked that like, was my mother. I think and it was an egg. Your mom was the one with the white hair? Yeah. Whoever came out of that mirror, she took them into the grotto. Um, Mom. Yes. Uh, I... That that place that they went, I went there before. To to pay a debt. I. Uh... A debt. Yeah. I... You you know Rachel. She's missing. She's dead, Mom. That's what you said. She couldn't pay her debt, and then she forged my signature, and I had to pay it. I had to kill a man. Uh, you killed someone? You know what? Details don't really matter. I, I'm here. But when I went there, time didn't pass the same way it did for everyone here. Billy, tell, tell my mom what you saw. Sky's, Sky's like behind on time or in front. I don't even really know. She's, she's at the end of a, of like a, she's getting close to the end of, a, a timeline, a loop, or something, and she's about to shoot back to the beginning. But I think I'm a couple days behind from everyone else. Okay. Do you know anything about that, or what that could possibly be? So when you were missing, you were in the grotto. 
Yeah. Where that woman on the TV just went. My boss. Yes. We had rumors. Stories. A lot of things in the office we couldn't explain. Things we'd be asked to research, to look into, that defied science, reason. Time dilation being one of them. She gave me a coin once. It said, aspire to be more. She asked me to carbon date it. That wasn't what was weird. I, it was made not long ago, 50s. But it never left. It wasn't old. It was still new. It didn't make sense. The materials that were used, the... The metal, the practices, all of it led to it being something that was created around 30 or 40 years ago, but the age of it was new. It, it came from there. Since, since I wasn't created there, I already existed prior. Could there be some sort of effect that happened to me? Hi, hi, ma'am. Uh, I'm Tibby. I'm not... Uh, wait, can you see me? Like, you... Yes? No, I'm not, like, big and with tattoos and... No. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, I... She was in there, and I pulled her out. Um, kind of forcefully. Clarence steps forward. Ma'am, I'm Clarity's son. Uh, I've heard a lot about these things and seen a lot, but maybe you can help us understand. This place, the grotto, time doesn't work the same there like it does everywhere else. Your daughter said that she came out, and in her mind, in her journal, she wrote that the date was March 15th. She'd been keeping track. Every day, you write. She never experienced a March 16th, 17th, or 18th until now. But when they pulled her out, it was March 18th here. Okay. So, it's the 20th now. Time will catch up to you tomorrow. It's three days. You said she was like a rubber band. Well, time is linear for all of us. You might jump around in it, move forward. Something you interacted with was outside of it. But for you, for you, it's linear. Always forward. And it sounds like time's gonna catch up. You'll run out. What happens... What happens when I run out? Will I shoot back to another time? Will I be the only one that remembers? I don't know. This is nothing I've ever encountered before. I... She'd be... She'd be doomed to be stuck on a loop. Not if she changed it. How? What led you here, now, to this moment? A lot of things. When you came out of that place, what had happened? Uh, n nothing. Well, I, I mean, the, the explosion at Synchroniti, but not, not the town. When we brought you in, uh, Lexi still hadn't blown up yet maybe I can stop it when I go back this is what's triggered everything we were seen 
when that happened. Uh, the explosion that happened at Synchronity, if I, if I could stop that, then people's powers won't... Uh. Shit. This is all a theory. There's no way to prove. Sky, I know... You said you saw her like a rubber band. Waiting to snap back. Get Either you'll be ripped out of this time and we'll continue forever without you. Or you're ripped out of this time and we all cease to exist. And time moves forward for you. Or we just keep going on with our lives and you stay here and another version of you goes back. I don't know. It, it, we can only theorize at this point. But either way, she'll be gone. At least gone from us. Here right Maybe now. it's possible that you being taken back just creates a split. A branch. Um, some believe that there are many universes out there. And yeah, maybe this is just a case of you snap back and this one continues this way. And then the other continues this way. I don't know. We have no way of knowing. Well, this is horrible. While this is all happening, could I have stayed upstairs? Yes, of course. I didn't feel like being around Sky or and her parents. Or taking your wheelchair down the stairs. Yeah. And it's weird being in her home with her parents, so I decided to stay upstairs. Fine. Well, <laughs> somehow I'm still alive. Uh, I've, I've fought to be here. I deserve to be here with everyone I care about. I've already said goodbye. But Sky, it, I I can I can fix things. All those people. I can figure it out, and I can make it right. If I'm the only one can do that can do it, then I don't have another option. But if I go back, I, I won't remember you. Or you. Why? Or er, you won't remember me. You'll remember everything. It's your timeline. I You're know, but they won't remember forward. me, though. If I go back, everything that's happened, all these memories, they're just mine. Fuck, but if I don't, then everyone dies. I don't... This is all becoming a lot. What? I... Memories, though. Marcus? Do yeah. you have any ideas? Can I, um... Would I know anything from the memories I took from my mom that would help in this situation in any possible way? Nothing in this situation. There's nothing she'd have knowledge on. But will you roll your brains for me, Marcus? Difficulty of eight. Okay. Marcus has four tokens available. <laughs> What was that? A one. one. Mm. Wow. You're preoccupied right now. There's some canned vegetables that look quite enticing in the corner. <laughs> no, I, I, what? No. I, I mean, I can take memories from, but I don't think we want to take anything from if you, Sky. If you took my memories, then I wouldn't have them. Yeah. And if I have to go back, then I have to fix things. There's no way. I, I need to know how to fix things. What, what caused that explosion? What can I do to stop it from happening? We all know what caused it. It was on the news. They shot at that girl. Oh, yeah. That's right. She panicked. And you could get to her first. Maybe help her. Yeah. Yeah, if you're able to stop that first explosion from happening, then a lot of this stuff may not even get revealed in the first place. Clarence steps forward. Or you could kill her. Do 
just putting all the options out there. I mean, if it, if it saves everyone and it's what I need to do, then I can do it. Tibby speaks up. Tibby, shut the fuck up. No. Don't no. even want to hear your hero speech. No, you can't kill you can't, her. You can't tell me what to do, Tibby. It's not... This is, you're not me. This, is, this doesn't have anything to do with you, Tibby. Shut your mouth. We have to go... Before I shut it for you. We have to save Lexi. Even if your timeline... What if your timeline doesn't work? What if you... What if you just go back, but we're still stuck in this one? We have to go save Lexi. And we have to go save Mike. They're like... They're our friends, and they're like us, and we can't just... But didn't you hear we're running out of time? Everyone's gonna die. You're running out of time. Um... Death. Sorry, Tibby. I don't know if you just saw what happened on the news. We all are. This is not going to be a good situation for any of us. Death is coming for everyone, not just me. But at least if she gets to go back and she can could. change things, she can make things better for at least where she is. We might be done here. I mean, we already know that other universes are gone because of the things we've already done. This might be the end for this one. But if Sky goes back and makes changes, it could be... a a new start for that universe for all of us. So what, we just give up? It so, wouldn't... No, you... No, we are making things better. You save the Tibby yeah. that hasn't gone through this No, I mean shit. now. No, we're going to still fight, man. We are. Maybe we'll get lucky and figure out a way where all of this gets to survive. But at the very least, we shouldn't let our mistakes hurt other universes. Past or present or future. And even... Even if everything gets worked out, I'm still going back. I'm still going to be gone. But I'll... I'll do whatever I can... right now... to make sure everything's okay. And it'd be really cool for her to go back and have good memories with whoever we are there to have to live with these memories that we have now. Will I just disappear? <laughs> Who knows, kid? As Clarence throws his hands up and walks back upstairs, leaving you all downstairs. As he does, he sees Mickey alone in the living room by herself. Hey. Hey. You okay? Uh, not exactly. I haven't told all the others yet, but... My parents died. The other day. That girl Lexi, she killed, she killed them. Oh yeah, we were just talking about killing her uh, in the past or something like that. Oh yeah, I was planning on it. She took my whole family from me. And I don't really feel like being in somebody else's house with their family they, they, that they got to keep. So you're jealous. <laughs> Everybody else has everything that they started with. They have their homes, they have their families. I have none of it. I have nothing left. It sounds to me like you've got a... got a lot. How do you figure that? I've wandered this planet alone for years. I might still have a mother still alone I would have given anything to have what you have down there friends people to confide in to yell at argue with laugh with joke with I was just alone are they my friends so far nobody's even noticed I didn't even go down there Look, they're just preoccupied with some pretty big shit. Yeah, that's why I didn't feel like bothering them with the news. My family's gone. You know, they probably already know. They're probably just trying not to talk to you about it. It's a tough subject for anybody. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't really want to be talking to you about it right now. It's kind of uncomfortable. Would you be able to do one thing for me? And then I'll, I'll let you go back downstairs you don't have to talk to me anymore yeah kid what's up you can shapeshift into into anyone like if, if I showed you a picture would you be able to turn into that person uh, 
Yeah. Would it be weird for me to ask you to, to look at this picture of my dad that I have? Just to give me one, one more Real second. Real fucking weird. I just want one more time to get to see him before I might never get to see him ever again in person. Whatever ends up happening. Roll your charm. Difficulty of four. Mm. Two. You have eight tokens available. I'll use two. Okay. Clarence takes the photo. He looks at it, looks at you. This will help? I hope so. I don't know. Okay. The photo and his form falls. As a puddle hits the ground. Bubbles momentarily before standing, reformed, as if stepping out of that photo. To the eyes, at least, is your father. Just don't, don't say anything. Okay. I want to kind of, like, pull him to get down on his knees to be eye level with me. And I want to put my hand on his face. And while I'm doing this, I want to use my powers to see if I can find my dad in another universe. Mickey Jones, you have six tokens available. How many would it take to... To do what, Mickey Jones? Seeing my dad makes me wonder if, if there's one of him out there that I could put here. Oh. In this body? Yes. I will say that would take five tokens. I will use five. Because you're placing an ego into a body that's not its own, but a malleable one at that. Mickey Jones reaches out into the multiverse, searching. She sees many versions of her father. Some good, some bad. But she knows it's best to find one as close to the real thing. Is there anything you'd like to be different? This is your choice, after all. Maybe one that was a little happier, that he didn't feel the need to drink, that was happy with our life of just me and him. Fair enough. You find this soul. He's currently sitting, having a nice dinner with you. And then he's not. Before Clarence can even recognize that something's happening, it's too late. Whatever made Clarence Clarence is no more. His soul, whatever it was that made him him, pushed down someplace deep, unable to be retrieved, to make room for the new person who steps inside this form, the new Mike Jones, as his eyes... Uh... Dad? Mickey? What happened to your legs? Are you okay? Are you okay? What happened? I'm, I'm okay. I, I didn't know if that what? was going to work. You hear from the corner by the door, What the fuck? <laughs> As you see two floating gloves shaking. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? As the door opens. What? What, what was... Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm, there's a lot to take in right now. M Mickey, are you okay? What happened to I'm, your legs? I'm okay. It's fine. I, I have a lot that I ha would have to explain to you, but it, you just need to know that it, it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay? What? Dad, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. It's, All of it's you from downstairs hear the sound of yelling before the door opens. As you come rushing up the stairs, you see standing before you none other than Mike Jones, Mickey's father. Whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, where, what's going on? Who are our... Who are our where, Mickey, where am I? What, Dad, what, what I, happened to I'm your... sorry. I'm sorry. It's fine. Everything is going to be fine. What? What's happening? Who's happening? What's going on? Uh, this, 
This is Mickey's dad, and we watched him die. Mickey, what's going on? I I, I, I asked Clarence if he, he could just change into my dad for a minute, just just to to help me. I that doesn't sound like Clarence. Clarence. It's no, not it's Clarence. Him. I couldn't help myself once Who's I saw Clarence? him. Who's Clarence? Where? What's going on? I was just having dinner. You took a mic and put him in Clarence? I, I didn't even know if I could when I was doing it. I just, I couldn't help myself. If I had the chance to bring him back, I, I took it, I took it. And I brought him here. I don't know what that means, where Clarence is. Uh, hello everyone, I'm, um, uh, my name's Mickey, what, what are you talking about? This is crazy, is this I, a I, prank? I can explain it all later, I'm A work so prank, sorry. John, are you back there? Is <laughs> this some sort of, uh, Wait, I, I know, you're Marcus Bennett, right? Yeah. Football player. Okay. Yeah. What are you hanging out with my daughter for? And and who are you kids? I. Dad, I can explain everything, and I'm I'm so sorry. Why don't you go downstairs with Sky's parents and just? It's safer down Sky, there for you. Uh. Hawkins. 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 Um. Okay. Why don't I've heard you go that downstairs. name before. You, her parents are down there. It's it's better down there. I'll explain everything later. As he goes to take a step towards the basement, he hears a crash coming from the cellar. In a moment of silence. A, what was? And then you hear a voice. A voice coming from that place. A voice that doesn't make sense. Most of you, it's so uncommon you don't recognize it, but Marcus. Marcus, you recognize it. Marcus! As you hear your father calling for you. Marcus, come downstairs. Dad? How'd your dad get down there? Is I don't it like know. a PTA meeting right now yeah. in this house? Was he there this whole time? I don't know. I don't think he so. He wasn't down there. Marcus! I gotta go check it out. Wait. So I'm gonna go downstairs. As you begin walking down these stairs, Marcus, from the one swinging light, you see a shape of a face. It's the face of your father. But something's not right. There's blood on it. The light swaying back and forth, every so often illuminating the front of his face, too dark to make out much else. His face low to the ground. Marcus! Marcus, where are you? Dad, where did you get Come here? down here, Marcus. So I'm, I'm downstairs. I see him. I want to come downstairs, too, and call it to my mom and dad and see if they're there. As you start to move behind him, granted, this is one single stairway going down to a cellar. You're behind Marcus. Is that where my parents are? That's where they were, yes. You call out. Mom. They don't answer in return. Dad? The dad. rest of you upstairs... I don't like the feeling of this guy. ...hear a sound, a crash from outside. The sound of... <laughs> Uh, and as you turn to look to the front doorway, you see what looks like some sort of long spoke with fingers, blood dripping from it from around the doorway, and in front of that, you see two floating gloves. As the blood begins to drip, and the life begins to leave Nick's body, Nick! He becomes visible. Oh. As his small, frail body falls to the floor, as this long hand-like thing pulls from backside of it, and then places it down like a paw. Would I recognize this? Yes, you would. On the front of the floor, as it then takes another step and moves its face. It, too, shares the face of Marcus's father as it begins to walk around from the side of the door. I want to use my powers. Fine. Okay. You have ten tokens available. Three tokens to pull a card. 
Ah, oh, shit. What do I you have do? Tange Mendia, the ability to heal others by touching them. The worse the injury, the greater the exertion. Um, roll 2d4 when activating this ability. You won't need to do that. That's, that's what your token's for. Okay, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to heal Mickey's legs, and then I'd like to use my powers again. You cannot heal Mickey's legs. Yes, I can. I have no, superpowers. That's not how it works. Those came at a cost. Uh, the moment I'm I, wanna, uh, I see this thing in the doorway, I'm calling out to Marcus and Sky. I want to heal the invisible dude, and then I want to use my powers again. You were downstairs. He's in front of the house. I Would thought you I like could see all this. You were running downstairs. This is happening in simultaneous moments. Damn it. In front of you is a dark hall with the face of Marcus's father, and you're calling out for your parents. Would you like to go down and find them? Yes. Okay. As you run further down through that hallway, past Marcus down the stairs, this thing, Marcus, mm. it tries to lunge for her. What? It's not your father. And as it moves through the light, lunging towards her, and she goes to run past it, you see that his face is that on the body of some sort of giant wolf with these strange long claws. As it moves across the floor towards her, you see on the opposite side of this room, on the other side of this creature, your parents on the ground and bleeding out. I jump towards the wolf so it doesn't hit Sky. You jump towards this creature. Mm -hmm. It jumps towards you. She now, you have that power that uh, you've already pulled. Yes. What would you like to do with it? I just jumped. Can I use two powers at once? <laughs> Can I flip another card? I have another five tokens. Sure, but it will cancel out the one you currently have. You can only have one at a time. In front of you are your parents bleeding out. Would you like to help them? Yes. I'd As you, you go down to touch them, you see the life bringing back into them, but it comes at a great exhaust to you as they were nearly dead. Roll your 2d4 and we'll see how much of an exhaustion this comes to you. Three. For that's for oh. one, roll again. Four, or er, four total. Four total. That's not too bad, could have been a lot worse, but you do feel very tired, Sky Hawkins. As you move these injuries out of their body, you feel a sensation you can only imagine is similar to Tibby's when he does. You feel it pulling from others around the multiverse, other versions of your parents ripping them apart with your own hands as you heal these two. And you see them start to come back to life. You find yourself quite tired. Now I need you, Marcus Bennett, to roll your fight in this instance as you've jumped head first towards this creature. Okay. To give Sky a moment. Before I do that, yes. question. Um, but I don't know if this is putting me too out of game, but by touching this thing, do I see anything? Yes, you will if you touch it. And you're, lo you're lounging for it, it's coming at you. Okay. When you touch any organic creature. All right. So what is a... Uh, Your fight. My fight? Difficulty of eight. Oh, cool. Two. Marcus, you have four tokens available. I will use them. That gets you within a range that will keep you from being utterly destroyed by this creature. That's good. But not a range that will keep you from damage. As you find yourself in a very sticky situation as its claws rip into your chest. Ah! But I'm... as this does, and it makes contact on you, Marcus, you see a flash of images, a flash of moments. You see the face of Skye's mother. You see a room, machines. You see it being born into life through its pain and anguish, an amalgamation of many different creatures. You see clarity and awe. You see it giving at the order to find you and your friends and to stop you at any cost. You come out of that moment and I'll give the rest of you an opportunity upstairs to react. Everyone else gets a turn. <laughs> Um, how much of this did I see? Did I see everything? You were running upstairs. You see 
obviously the bleeding on the ground, now dead. Uh, Man. do I have any tokens? Billy Baker has three tokens available. Um, okay, I want to use my three to see if, uh, there's something about this reality that is bullshit. Billy Baker, you use your ability to reach out, to feel the world around you. You feel a trace. You see a movement, a shift, but it only traces back down through this hallway to sky below. That is the only false aspect of this reality that you can see. Everything else is a dire threat to you. Do I have any tokens? Mickey Jones, you have two tokens available. What, what would it take? Could I check and see if it has an ego that I would be able to? With two tokens? Mm. No, you cannot. Okay. Impeg, you have five tokens available. As this creature turns through this doorway with Marcus's father's face, looking up at the group of you, blood still dripping from its long, spiny-like claws. Well, I'm standing on the stairs because I was about to follow Sky downstairs. So I saw the Marcus and Sky thing. So you're between both situations. Mm hmm What are you doing, Impeg? Panicking? Uh, can I scream out not to use her powers? You can scream that from below, sure. As she screams out from below, Impeg, knowing- don't use your powers! I am convincing myself that I'm not seeing the monsters, but when Sky says that, I drop my journal to the ground, and I have a far off look in my eyes, and I yell back, Sky, how many times have we watched Home Alone? I know this sounds weird, but please tell me how many times we've watched Home Alone. I need an exact number. As you're yelling this, this is in the middle of Marcus being attacked on top of the screaming coming from outside as things are moving close. You're healing your parents underneath your hands as you feel yourself ripping them apart in another universe. In fact, I don't know. I, I Time passed and I wasn't there. I don't let her stop. I use my powers. Impact. Your ability will now stop time. For almost three years. A very long time, 32 months. The moment time stops. You feel it. You know. You nearly have three years to fix this situation. You can see down below Marcus with a claw on his chest. Above, and explainably, Mickey's father on one side of you, her wheelchair next to him. Tibby and Billy stopped, looking in horror at Nick's dead body on the ground as a creature stepping over it. And Sky, down below, under a light, frozen, answering to you up above. What do you do right now in this moment? Uh, hyperventilate, so I walk outside, so I don't have to look at anything that's happening. Because I know I have three years to figure out how to get them out of here. And I'm just like pacing right outside, just like freaking out. I don't know. You do that. You pace. You notice in the sky above you another set of fighter jets stopped in time, appearing as if they're about to release some sort of weaponry again, firing off. In another direction, you see a collection of soldiers going house to house. And another, the other end of the street, more. The world 
it seems Impeg is crumbling around you. But before you can go too much further and your mind trapped within this space, you hear something. For a second you imagine maybe it's Sayaka. Maybe she somehow found a way to move past just seeing you. It's a shame that she can't, because maybe she should scream to warn you, for she could see it coming. You see, Mpeg, these creatures, they're built to adapt. They're built to learn. And they run off the same energy that you do. And you hear their footprints. As the one at the doorway turns, Marcus? Marcus, get in here. I need to speak to you, Marcus. As the other one slicks its way slowly up the stairway, its head dipping down, staring at you from behind, through the doorway, past the other one. They both, like animals on a hunt, come outside that door. They start to move in both directions. Impeg, what do you do? Uh, is the van that we took to get here still outside? It is. I want to get in the van. And I want to drive to the library. First, I need you to roll your flight for me. Difficulty of six as you start making a dead sprint for that van. The two of these creatures circling around you. It's three. Impeg, you have two tokens available. Oh. I will use them. You get to five. As you jump inside the van, the doors close. You turn the ignition. As one of the creatures slams up against the side of the van, the whole thing shaking. As you see its face with Marcus's father's face, rubbing its face up against that passenger window, slobbering, drooling on the side as its teeth gnarl, trying to get in. Its claws screeching, cracking at the door. You can roll your flight one more time, as this difficulty is only going to make it a little bit harder to drive that van as it starts to slash at your tires. That's a one. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Man. The um, tires are now slashed. It begins to scratch at the metal of the door. Is it at the driver's side door? I said it was on the passenger side passenger door, side so... Door? Okay, can I... Can I get out of the driver's side door and just start running? You can. As it starts screeching, one of the windows breaks on the passenger side as it starts to try to climb up and in. You open the driver's side door and make a dead sprint towards where? My house. Okay. Roll your flight. Difficulty of six. Oh Eight. You begin running as fast as you can, the gravel underneath your feet sliding and slipping from the force of your footsteps. You start moving in between the houses, darting left and right. You see one of them has jumped on top of the van, looking, scanning in all directions. It spots you. It begins chasing directly after you. You hop a fence and start moving your house just a couple blocks away. Another flight for me, difficulty of six. You've got a couple blocks to run. This is going to be quite difficult. Seven. You keep running as one of them gets close on the back of your heels. You go sliding around a corner as its feet kind of slide out from under it as it slides, slamming into some sort of fence as you hear it crash on top, but you don't look back. You just keep running as fast as you can. You make it to the front of your house. The door is open. Someone was just leaving or someone was just in. Hard to say. I go inside and I shut the door and... I go down to the basement. Just as you shut that door, you feel it slam on the other side as the full blunt of weight of this creature hits. But you know that's only one. Where's the second one? You can't see where it is. It's not banging at the door, but you have to assume it's somewhere close. You start running down towards the basement. Are there any doors towards that basement in between you and them? There's a hallway door, but that's it. And then the cellar door. Cellar door, hallway door. You close both of them, moving in. Now you get down into this basement and you tell me, what do you do, Mpeg? Uh, I know I don't have a lot of time to waste, but I still stand there for a second. 
contemplating my, like, the decisions that I have to make. And I had prepared for a lot while I was in the void. Um, I wrote a lot about it in my journals and like I watched Home Alone with Sky hundreds of times and drew a lot of inspiration from that and I used a lot of my time to make traps like Kevin did, just in case it came down to needing to use them. And so I go into the basement and I take a minute and I pat my pockets and I don't have my journal because I dropped it. And I wish that I could look one last time at the drawing that I'd made at Sky before I go over to the hot water heater and I turn one of the knobs on where the gas line comes into it. Now in this world, MPEG, when you operate something while you're touching it, it moves. But gas isn't really a mechanical object in a way. So this energy that the gas might be emitting, it will not move until time begins again. So for now, it's just an open valve. Yes. Um, I'm going to pull the gas hose out so that the gas will leak. OK. When time resumes. OK. And then I'm going to pull the lighter out of my pocket, and I'm going to take off my sweatshirt. And I'm going to light the sweatshirt on fire, and I'm just going to wait, staring up at the door. There are things you would need to know for this to work, MPEG. So I'm going to say I need you to roll your brains for me. OK. This is all I'm just guessing at this point. Difficulty of 12. 13. Yes. Oh. So things that you know. Time cannot continue until time continues. But you have a theory. You have a theory, MPEG, that you're the only reason time is stopped. If something was to happen to you, time would continue, just as it should. So knowing this information, am I safe to assume that you're luring them in here? Yes. You hear the scratching at that door, a break, first at the hallway and then the cellar door. You wish it would happen all at once, but they take their time. You start to wonder if they're smarter than they look. I mean, they must be. They've tracked you for days. But they continue on. They continue digging, scratching at that door, throwing their weight into it, until finally the door gives, where they see you, Mpeg, holding in her hand a shirt that's on fire. They're going to run towards you. What would you like to do? I'm going to close my eyes. OK. You close your eyes. And if you could thank them for anything, is that they make this quick. You feel hardly anything. You don't get to feel the explosion that follows. For the rest of you, time unbeknownst to all of you except Sayaka, had been stopped. But in that moment, no one's in front of you. The creature's gone. But you're awoken to a loud explosion about three blocks away. The shake of this explosion rocks the foundation of the house. 
you can hear glass breaking and houses just a block over. Of course, for a moment, it'd be safe for you to assume that Lexi somehow had gone off again, or maybe a stray missile. But you notice that the creatures are gone, and that Impeg is gone as well, and sitting in her place, where she, stand, where she was standing, is nothing but a journal. At the top of the stairs, Sky, you see this journal. Sitting next to it, a note with your name on it. No, no. The no. explosion rattles the ground. Mickey, what the? What was that? What's going on? What were, what were those things? I don't know. Impact. Where's Impact? Where is this Whenever tree? she goes back, she is supposed to There's be here. There's a fucking dead kid on the ground. I want to run outside. You run outside. You see the van. Clawed. Streaks of tears through the aluminum. The tires slashed. The window broken. No. No. Sayaka would have seen her run. Would have seen the creatures chase after her. I want to run back to Sayaka and ask her, What did you see? Where did Impeg go? She... She ran. She ran to her house. Would I know where her house is? You know in the general direction from where you are now. And you would know that that's exactly where you see a giant cloud of black smoke rising to the sky. How many tokens do I have? Mickey Jones, you have four tokens available. I would like to use tokens to find MPEG if I can... Mickey Jones, <laughs> you can use three tokens to confirm your worst fears. That MPEG no longer exists in this universe. Guys, MPEG's gone. She's just gone. What's go- Wait, uh... No. No, 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 no. Tibby kneels down next to Nick. Oh, he's dead. He's dead. And and it, wait, Nick is dead. Uh, but Impeg is. She's gone, gone, like gone, gone. I can't find her. There's no. I can't find her. That means she's not here. She's gone. Fucking. All she left was a journal. Why do I keep getting these journals? And a letter with your name on it. What is it? It's a letter with my name on it. Oh. I want to go read it by myself. (laughs) (laughs) You go read it for yourself. But given this was a note, let me ask. This This is something that the audience can know. So, unbeknownst to the rest of the group, please share with the audience. All right. I'm going to open the letter, and I think in my heart, I'm hoping that she figured out a way. There's something that she's not really gone, but she she can't be gone. Sky, it sucks to write this. I've honestly been trying for months, and I honestly have no better way to say it. So here it goes. If you're reading this, it's highly likely that I'm dead. I'm not sure how or why. Maybe I got too cocky or maybe Sayaka convinced me that I could fly. (laughs) Regardless, I died and I could only hope that I did so nobly. When you fix this whole mess, and I know you will, do you mind finding my parents? Just tell them that I love them and that I can't read what she wrote, she scribbled it out. I'm I'm proud to call them my parents. I never told them that enough. And Skye, thank you for everything. I love you too. Both versions of you. M. I was gonna say, saying this to myself. I was gonna tell her. I was gonna tell her that 
I know time moves differently for her, but I wanted to make up for the moments that I wasn't there. Man, why does this always happen to me? Fuck. Hey, Sky. Uh, is she going to be okay? No, she's really dead. What were those things? Wait, they're not... What, what Are they coming that? back for us? Did, do we need to go? Do we need to run? Is there more? <laughs> um... How do we know? I don't know. Are they coming back? I don't know. Did she... She and must have did taken she care kill of him? him. That explosion must have been her. Those things knew where we were. I... I can't... imagine that there's only two of them. Where's... We need... We need Clarence. We need Clarence. He needs to tell us where to go and what, what to do. Is, she, is he still alive? Clarence, right? Because like he became dad, right, Mike? Wait, what? No. No, that's... You had him shapeshift and then... I, I didn't know that, that I could even do that. I just... I saw him. And if there was a chance that I could bring him here, I wanted to try. Hold the fuck up here everybody i'm sorry uh kid there, there's a child bleeding out on the floor and i don't the, what were those creatures M mickey i'm like dreaming right now you're in a wheelchair what is happening dad there's a lot that i have to explain and it's not going to make any sense to you now but i can explain this whole world to you later okay Everything's kind of blowing up right now, and we probably shouldn't stay here just in case there are more of those things. And I don't know that Clarence would have known where we should go next. We just have to go somewhere else. Ah! Is there a kid down there? The, the Marcus kid's down there. So I'm like slowly Marcus! climbing up. Marcus! I got, I'm your boy. I got you. I got you. Oh! I got you. Here. Here. Let me, let me help. Let me help. Oh! Stop it. Shut up and let me help. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, Marcus. I didn't... You, that looks like it hurts. Okay. And then it just shows like there's like three big wounds right there. Yeah, like big like you can see in it. Okay. You're doing this? Yeah. Just I'm gonna rip ah! apart another Marcus. But it's okay. As Tibby places his hand on Marcus's chest and starts to heal the wounds, you can hear from outside. Not too far down the road. Chatter. Like coming out of a radio. Something's going on. They probably heard the screaming. The commotion. The van with the door now open. The explosion. Uh, guys, I, uh, there's like... Tibby peeks his head out the front door. There, there's like military people out there. There, there's, uh, there's like military people out there. Shit, shit. What do we do? We're still in disguise. Yeah, but we just. I don't think disguises matter now. We're not supposed to be here. Uh, should we hide? What do you think? We should I, I hide us? I can stop them. No, we need to run. They they have vehicles, tanks, and jets. Yeah. We need to run. We need to run. I'm not running. I don't want to run anymore. I don't want to do anything anymore. That thing. Those things had my dad's face. There's only one way I know they could have gotten it. 
You guys have to survive. You guys have to. You start to hear the sound of gunfire close by. It's not coming towards your general direction, though. And then you hear the sound of screaming. Some sort of loud energy blast. Like fire. And then there's a silence. And you hear nothing but the sound of the sirens. And that's when you hear its footsteps. Whatever this is, it's large. Or at least it sounds large by the weight. You can hear it walking down the street. The strange part of this is though it's walking, it sounds metal. Moving parts, but rhythmic, like footsteps. Oh, uh, guys, what is that? What is that? As the ground begins to shake. Is it too far away to see, or can we see it from where we are? Would you like to look? I would like, yes, I'd like to look. As you move towards the front of the house, stepping over Nick's dead body, peering out over the front door, you see something that stands at about 12 feet tall. It makes no sense to you, Marcus. It's like something out of a movie. Humanoid in shape. But not human. Robotic in a way. Some of the parts on its chest appear to be made up out of whatever it was those jets were made of. You can see slabs of metal moving around in different spots. You can make out the shape of an American flag like a sticker on the wing of a plane. But you also notice that it's wet. Certain parts of it. Metal. Covered in moss. Sloshing its way. It sees you. It puts up a hand. Can I can I roll for brains? Of yes, you I think can. it might be who I think it might be who it is. Difficulty of six. Sixteen. I'm going to say you don't know what it is, but you rolled so high. You can recognize that it means you know threat. It's greeting you. So I'm gonna do the same thing. It lowers its hand, turns, and starts to walk directly towards the house. As it walks, it brushes against the front of the van and effortlessly pushes it, sliding it, screeching out of the way, its metal rims pushing against the pavement. You all hear this screech from outside. It continues to walk. It stops at the front of the house. Guys, this sounds weird, but I don't feel like this is a threat to us. I want to roll out to see it for myself, too. As you roll your way out the door, you see this 12-foot-tall machine. It leans in. Hello. I am Davina. I mean you no harm. What you are scared. Can I put my hand out again? It puts its hand out as well. Do you oh, know like this thing? Hand. It reaches out, grabs your hand. Do I see anything as a result of us touching? No. For it is not organic in any way. Wow. Okay. I can see you. What brings you here? I woke up. 
Were you? I've been asleep. Were you at, th at for the for a very long time? You were at the bottom of the lake. It appears that way. Yes. Why are you here to help us? I'm not here for any specific reason. I am awake. I see you mean me no harm. Though it's possible you could. How can we trust you? Why would you? You sound like a robot. I am. I am not human. Are you human? I think so. She does not realize she is not human. What? We're she all may human. Need help. You are, yes. She is not. Yes, she is. I... What is she then? She is yeah. energy. Oh, right. That must be her power. You're talking about my power. Whatever you would like to call it, yes. You are not human. Were you once? So I'm I don't physically exist? That is for you to decide. I believe I exist. Do you huh. want to exist? Yes. Then you exist. How can you know these things? My vision. It sees her. She is just energy, electricity. Who are you? I am Divina. Hello. I'm awake. I've been asleep for a very long time. Where did you come from? Here, I believe. Somewhere. Here, but later. Later. Much. Later. You're here before you're supposed to be? I was born on this place. I've traveled for a very long time. Very long time. I'm awake. People are shooting at me. Par for the course. There's a lot going on. Do you know anything about the stonemasons or no, the grotto or... I do not. You're just here. I'm here. I'm awake. I've been asleep for a very long time. Well, you've come at a pretty bad time. Or a good time. Yes. I wondered what surge of energy. Something had to reboot my systems. <laughs> You all look scared. We are. Are the men shooting at me trying to shoot at you? Probably. There's also monsters attacking us. And other worlds trying to take over this place. We're all in very much in danger. You remind me of the woman I love. Her name was Divina. I was programmed to love her. But I loved her the same. No one shall harm you. They should not be shooting at us. It's not polite. But I've seen a lot of very, very bad things in my life. So I am not surprised. So what do you usually do when you see bad things? Do you take care of it? When I can. I try. How so? However I can. Sometimes I am unable. It feels good to have a body again. But you're also a ship, right? I once was. For a long time. Many, many generations. Would you be willing to help us? Of course. Are you in danger? Yes. Are they shooting at you too? It's not specifically them that we're in danger of. It's something even greater than that. 
And what's that? Can we see the the towers and everything from where we are? So I'm just gonna point to it. Oh yes. Those are not normal. No, not at all. Interesting. The energy that surrounds it is the energy that flows through you. That's all normal. Well, to me anyway. But it's not normal to anyone else around, and. It's causing a real problem for everybody here. Okay. I'll do what I can. I think in whatever way that I can. And in that moment, you see her body fall forward in anguish as electricity starts to flow all around the outside. And as she falls down to one knee, you recognize some sort of device has been planted on her back. As you trace behind her, you can see on the opposing side in a yard across the street, someone has shot this device at her. And that's when you see that they're closing in. She distracted you, unknowingly, of course. As you take a quick look around the house, you see that you are surrounded as they begin closing in on all directions. You hear the sound of something being bumped in the back of the house as well. She begins to try to stand, to move. I will not let them harm you. I will not let them ha harm you. As another one hits her now left shoulder and she falls again down to the ground. Are you okay? I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm... What can we do? They're killing her. It's not going to last much longer. I can help her. Can I? Can I? You can possibly, Sayanka. You have eight tokens available. As you see these military individuals swarming in in all directions, their guns are up. They're closing in. What would you like to do, Sayanka? I want to help. She can help us, right? If she's, she has a power back. Possibly, yes. So I can give electricity. Power. What would you like to do? I want her. I want to fix her so she can fight for us. Now you are energy. She's currently being held down by electricity. Mm -hmm. Oh. So I can take her. Wait, if I take an electri electricity from her and I use the, uh, that power to blow up the the people. People. You could. It's just a question of how hard you would like to try. But also, As I can turn you swarming in on you. So I can. But if I use that and I can, I will kill what's her name not necessarily you could use if you use all of your tokens you can tell me exactly what happens if I use all my tokens I can blow up all the people that are surrounding us so they can, so they can leave if you would like to take all the electricity out of the area and spread it and to those individuals that are attacking you, I will allow you to do so, if you use your power. Okay. If you use all of them, I'll let you tell me exactly what you do and exactly what happens. So, Sayaka. Yes. As you see Davina reeling on the ground in pain, with these two rocket-like batons that have been shot into her back, that are sending an electric current all around her body, and you see a group of military personnel flowing in from the front. You're standing on the front porch of this deck, of this house. You reach out. You can start to redirect all that energy. Tell me what you do. Walk me through what happens. Um, first, I will 
blow up only I will I want to make sure that they are safe okay so I need to find out, out the way to let them escape it's all happening at once you just tell me what happens okay so I just blow up everybody all the military okay so I'll help you out here you reach out y yes you take all the electricity from the area mm -hmm. you let it flow through your body collecting mm -hmm. into the oh, energy that is you you take it up out of Divina I'm going to say as you start to do this to make sure you don't harm J.A. you just instinctively hand him to Sky as you then take both hands collect all the energy from the neighborhood suck the energy out of Divina and spread it outward in front of you as this energy bolts out and hits each one of these individual men their bodies evaporate on impact the current flowing through them so strong they just cease to exist as it disintegrates arcing between each and every one of them but upon bringing all this energy together flowing all of it through you and redirecting the surge too much for you to handle as you feel you're losing control of your physical form like a part of yourself is starting to lift you feel the air around you the current that flows above you in the sky always with you the current that flows below you deep within the earth you can feel that you want to become one with it as you start to lose your shape but before you lose all of your shape Sayaka you look down at J.A. your precious child that you of course would have raised forever perfectly he's wearing a metal bracelet that has the name AJ on it you understand that this metal you can feel it it's old you can feel it in the air around you I'm gonna give you a choice Sayaka you can choose to join the current in the world around you whether it be the power lines the local energy or the energy in the air itself or you can transfer your energy directly into that bracelet that's around Jay's wrist what would you like to do I will choose the bracelet so I can be with J.A. So within one fail swoop, you see this energy lifted, pulsed out like a wave in all directions around you. The current so charged in the air, you can feel the hair rising on your head, like a bolt of lightning about to come down from the sky. A bright flash of light. And as far as you all are aware, Sayaka is gone. You can see her nowhere. As far as you are aware. What? What did she do? Where'd she... What just happened? She just... She gave me J.A. and then... She was gone. Did she just explode on those guys? Where did she go? I think that's exactly what she did. I mean, to take that many people out, no matter how powerful you are, it's... What the hell's going on? Like, what is going on? If she wasn't human, she was just energy. She must have just become energy. But she was human. What? You can't just turn into energy. She was... She had thoughts and stuff. Gone. She killed all those people. To save us. But maybe we should have gone with them. 
Maybe they weren't gonna kill us. Maybe they're just chasing this thing, and we should have gone with well, them. What are we supposed to we, do? She did it. We That's know that they're after us. But they have Lexi and Mike. We could go after them. We could go. We could go with them. We could let them capture us, and then we can go. We can go save Lexi and Mike. Yeah. We could, we could just let them take us. They can't hurt us anyway, right? I can just heal us. So, so we go with them, we let them take us, and then we save Lexi and Mike. You can't save Lexi. Why? How many tokens do I have? Mickey Jones has one token available, but Impeg is dead and she has 20. <laughs> hey, can I borrow some? <laughs> <laughs> I have rule over that, so I will say yes. You have a divided amount of tokens between all of you because Impeg has quite a few. Okay. What I wanted to do back when I was looking for Lexi and I found her in the helicopter, I want to have had killed her then. Okay. Now, usually this is something we would not allow, but this system does have planned actions, and I will say this is something that above table was discussed before the show with me as being something she wanted to have done without the knowledge of everyone else at the table. So I will allow it for five tokens. As you preemptively let everyone know that Lexi is already gone. What? You... You, you can't do that. I told you I was going to decide, and I did a long you time ago. You don't get to decide. You don't get to decide who lives and who dies. And you do? No. Then who does? I don't. I just heal people before they die. I, you don't get to do that. That's not okay. You're not God. I did what needed to be done. And so... What, 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 makes, she, she, what makes you think... You're dangerous. Just so, like, you can just kill people by thinking about them. But I didn't kill half a town, all of Portland, and my parents. You couldn't save them, so then I did. And I stopped her because I could. No, that's not okay. This is not okay. You know she was hurting not, people. You know what's not okay? It's not okay that Impact had to sacrifice herself to save us. It's not okay that the energy is gone and we no longer have Sayaka because we still are here. Everyone around us keeps dying, Tibby. Everyone keeps dying to keep us alive because we're supposed to do something and we can't sit around here and keep acting like that we're not supposed to. I told you this before, man. This is in game. We gotta do this. We shouldn't. There's shouldn't. no we shouldn't. None of us wants to do this, Tibby. None of us wants to do this. But it's what we have to do. Or else they died for nothing. Do you want that on your conscience? There has to be a way we can save people. That's what we're trying to do now. But without... But sacrifices have to happen in order to save everyone else. They call it greater good for a reason, man. We're trying to save people. I stopped her to save people. She was killing people, Tibby. So she killed my dad. We're executioners now? No, we're I making wasn't... the hard decisions that other people can't. We shouldn't do that. We're just kids. Well, I wasn't the first one to decide that. What do you mean? What about Billy? What about Marcus's mom? What about Marcus's mom? I, I helped her. Yeah, Mickey. You couldn't say my dad and I did, but you did save Marcus's mom because she was dead and Billy lied to you. Well, uh... No, she was, uh... Mickey, I said I was gonna tell him. Well, you took you too long. You did it. You you tricked me. You. That's why it felt so weird. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tivy. No, fuck you. Fuck you, man. <laughs> so. That's not. What, what was it? Were we supposed to let Marcus's mom die? He's right there. Tell him. She was already dead. Was I supposed to let my dad die? You're making these judgments and these calls. And I don't care anymore about what's right and what's wrong. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I did. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Then fucking go. Wait. No. You need Tibby. 
No, we don't. We How just many? need his powers. If you, if How Tibby weren't here right now, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We would just be killing people. How many tokens do I have? Marcus Bennett has two tokens, but Mpeg has 16. I would like to grab Tibby. <laughs> I would like you to roll your fight for me, because right now Tibby wants no one to touch him. Yeah. Well, your fight difficulty of seven. <laughs> okay. All right. So Tibby's going to roll his flight. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> you go to reach for Tibby, and he immediately pulls away. No, no. I Fine. I'm, I'm leaving. Don't leave. And I'll, I'll go see if I can help somebody. Tibby. We have to be able to make these choices, and he's not willing to do it. Let him go. He is willing to do it. No, let he's him He's not willing to kill. People. Can I roll brains to see if I have caught on to what Marcus is trying to do? No. Not right now. Damn. Not in this moment. Later, maybe. That's all right. Tibby, you stay. You, they need you. You follow them around secretly. You lied to me, man. I know. It's not okay. We talked about this. You you said I didn't have to do anything I wasn't comfortable with. I know. But you're going to have to be comfortable with it or not. You stay with us and you fight or you go, but know that if any of us get injured, we can't be healed. You want to make all the tough decisions, Tibby? Well, here it is on the table because I'm going. These people killed my father. They've got to go. How many tokens do I have? Billy Banker has zero tokens, but MPEG has 16. Cool. So how many can I use? You could use as many as you want. Oh. MPEG's dead. Well, I want to all describe... Can you just <laughs> not? <laughs> I'll describe to you what I want to do, and you can just tell me. Okay. Uh. Okay, well, first... Um, Tibby, uh, I did a bad thing, and I've done a lot of them, and, uh, I'm sorry, but I think this team needs you, and if they don't, if they don't understand how important you are, leave. You gotta worry about yourself, and you're not a killer. That death is on me. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Look, man. I'm gonna walk over to Mickey and hand her a dollar bill and say, Don't spend it all in one place. And then I, Billy, am going to reach out to a another reality. On, let me think. Be careful with your wording. Yes. Billy is going to reach out to another Billy who is in a coma. Pull him into me. So you're going to go back. At what point, Billy, do you want this to be perceived? Is this as if you never woke up from the coma, or is this you just go into a coma? I just go into one. You just fall into a coma. Yep. Where you stand. I don't understand you people. <laughs> As he hands you the dollar and says, don't send it all, spend it all in one place, he falls to the ground. Question. Yes, <laughs> Billy. Question. <Baker. laughs> that dollar was a, uh, originally a napkin. Does it stay a dollar after I go into a coma? Yes. 
It does. Good. You fall to the ground, Billy Baker. What? Timmy, what? No, 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 what just happened? What? Billy! Billy! He immediately puts his hands on Billy, not questioning whether or not he's alive or dead. Billy, no! Billy! Billy! Oh, Billy! He's not, I, I can't feel it, he's not responding. He's not responding. Uh, he's not dead, but he's not responding. Why would he just leave us like that? What's he doing? What's going on? What's going on? And in that moment, as Billy Baker lie on the ground, this giant metal creature sits motionless in front of you, the power removed from its body. Something takes you off guard. You see, she disintegrated all of the ones in the front of the house, but she didn't take care of the ones in the back of the house. As a loud sound pierces through your skull, you feel your brain start to cringe and shrink. It stings. It pierces, causing all of you to fall to your knees making your vision blurry as you see a man step from around the side of the house. Barely visible through your blurred vision, the sound making it impossible to think, impossible to focus. This man is missing a left eye, his face scarred, from one side to the other. You hear piercing out over the ring, but not vocally. You don't see his mouth move. Don't fight it. You'll only make it worse. But if you choose to fight it, I'll turn your skull into a ripe watermelon, juicy bits and all. And that's the last thing you hear before you black out. And that will end tonight's episode of Kolok 1991. Well... You found yourself back at the start.